John Tory taking a second term, winning easily against his main challenger, Jennifer Keysmat, with over what, 63% of the vote. Yeah. And he joins us here, the Chief Magistrate of Toronto. Good morning. Good morning and congratulations. Thank you. What was the first thing you thought when you woke up this morning? Oh, I just, you know, I, I just thought that I, I had a lot of interviews to do this morning. I didn't, you know, it's funny because you, you have so much time to prepare for, you know, the, the election night itself. And then, uh, you know, so the next morning you just wake up and say it's time to get on with work. I think it's when you lose, actually. You right. know, I've been through it. I and mean, when you lose, you feel the next morning your phone does not ring. Nobody really wants to interview you. Um, and it's That's a harder morning tough. to deal with uh, because you're used to this incredible pace where you're out there. You know, talking about the issues, and everybody wants to interview you, and then all of a sudden nobody calls. So uh, it's uh, winning. Uh, you just carry on with work. The next four years are going to be very different from the past four years, and and one of the main reasons why is you have a very different council makeup this time round. Not only are there 25 councillors instead of 44, uh, there were going to be 47, but but many different faces. Uh, you worked really hard, I think, behind the scenes to sort of line up certain councillors that you would like on board. Uh, how do you think it's going to go? Do you think you have enough in your favor, I'm hearing that you do, to get what you want accomplished? I believe so. And look, I think in the end, the councillors know that the overwhelming mood of the people right now is to say, look, get things done, especially on transit and housing. You know, I, if there's a message that came through sort of louder and clearer, I already knew it, but on the affordable housing piece, we just need to do more. And on the transit, they're saying, look, you've got a plan, so now just get on with building it. And so I'm very motivated to do that, but I think the councillors will have heard the same message because people are saying as part of sort of keeping the city very livable and on top, you got to have the housing for everybody, which includes people who are struggling now, and you have to have the transit to get around. So I think it'll be, uh, it's always challenging. There are no parties down there. And people don't realize when you have a party, say at Queen's Park, the premier, the leader of the party can say, this is the way I want you to vote, and people generally do that. At City Hall, uh, you've got to go out each time and, and, and forge a coalition, in this case now with 13 votes out of 25, to win uh, on an issue. And so, but that's the job you're sent to do, so I'm ready for that, and it, I think it'll be fine. A lot of veterans are gone. Norm Kelly, yeah. for example, Joe Mahevic, yeah. you threw your support yeah. behind him, Josh Matlow won instead. Giorgio Mammoliti. One you of the know, most colorful, controversial yes. characters at City Hall. And, what are and, your thoughts on well, him? Well, my thoughts are that the color is something that you know could be sort of amusing on certain days and not others. Um, he actually was capable of, of being very thoughtful about housing, for example. He could go back and find a report he wrote 10 years ago, and I think if he'd stuck to more of that, he might have uh, you know, hung on again last night. But I think sooner or later when you're into this business of being in the headlines all the time, you kind of you know, run out of gas or the people run out of patience. And so anyway, it is what it is. And, and uh, you know, he is one of those people who um, you know, uh, just ran out the string, I think. And uh, so he's retired from public life as of now. Uh, I would say Don't we'll, count we'll, we'll be Mamalia. seeing him again I'm, somewhere. I'm sure we somewhere, will. Somewhere, somehow. This entire campaign was thrown into disarray when Doug Ford announced unexpectedly that he was going to downsize Toronto City Council. Uh, it was appealed, uh, then it was lost, and I believe the city still has an appeal in the yes, works. Yes, there's court proceedings that are... are... Are you going to carry on with that? Well, that was council's instruction. So I guess mm -hmm. unless council decides otherwise, then you'd carry forward with those. And I think... Would you it, like council to carry well, on Well, I think... You know, I, you know why I would say yes? Because I think it is very important. I mean, I profoundly objected to the way this was done. And I think that even on the issue of the potential use of the notwithstanding clause, these are important things to get some precedent on paper from judges to say we either think this is kind of the right way to go or the wrong way to go or put some lines around it. So to me, I think for the future, you might want to have a judge or some judges take a look at these things and make some comments because those comments often help later on if there's something else going on. And you can say, well, back you know, when they looked at the council, they said this. So for that reason, I, I might well say we should carry through with what we said, which is just letting these appeals run their course and having judges say what they have to say because that's oftentimes quite useful. Can you work with Doug Ford? He's made it very clear he holds the power and he's not afraid to use it. Yes, I, I talked to him last night and I, I, you know, we talked about the fact we need to have some things we get done together because one thing I know for sure, Doug Ford needs Toronto to be strong, needs Toronto to be prosperous. He needs, therefore, for us to get transit built and to address affordable housing because if Toronto isn't strong, then Ontario is not strong. And if Ontario is not strong, he loses, you know, because in the end, people vote with their pocketbooks as much as anything else. And so I believe that he's going to be motivated to, uh, you know, to, to get some stuff done, to find that common ground that's always there. 
um, and I think these reports of us, you know, sort of engaging in fisticuffs or having wrestling matches are, you well, know, gross. sometimes they're in public. Well, sometimes well, there's, there's fine. There's public and, of comments. course, but I mean, when does that not happen in politics? The mm -hmm. key is, can you move away from the wrestling matches and the the fisticuffs to, you know, the next morning saying, well, we we've got some common ground on this issue: community safety, transit, whatever. Let's let's focus on that, and that that's what I think we will be able to do. But uh, you know, time will tell. There's been a lot of talk about legacy, what your legacy will be now that you've won a second term, and you've just hinted that maybe, maybe a third term, you're not ruling I it out anymore. One at a time. But, one at yeah. a time. Um, you got an overwhelming mandate with 63%, which gives you a lot of room. Is there, is there one project, is there one thing that you would love to accomplish to leave your mark on this city for well, the years to come? Well, it's a project, uh, Cynthia, in the sense of it being a sort of a park. I mean, I have Rail Deck Park, mm -hmm. which I'd love to do, and it's important for the city, I believe. It is that I really think there are people in this city, in neighborhoods, concentrated in certain neighborhoods that are struggling a lot. And the boom that is Toronto today, like Toronto's booming today. Companies are coming from all over the world, people are coming. They're kind of left out of that. And I think there's a way in which we can actually bring them in. We've got to support the families that are often facing certain struggles and need just a little bit of help. And I really want to sort of focus hard on that and make sure that we provide those supports. And it's all governments and it's business and it's labor. Who can do that? And I think that if you said to me that four years from today, I had made a positive difference. You won't solve the problem overnight, but that you, the kids who live up there and their parents felt those kids had as much access to what's going on, oftentimes it seems downtown, uh, as, as other kids. I'd be very proud of that and say that was as important as any project you could go and point at. Um, I just think that's what keeps this city, um, you know, the envy of the world. We, we, we say that. You know, we say that everybody has a chance here, everybody has hope. There are people who lose hope in this city and we've got to try and fix that. Absolutely. Mr. Mayor, congratulations Thanks. and thank you very much Thanks for coming in to On Breakfast Television. I look forward to grilling you at City Hall over yeah, the next four no years. Of, I have no doubt. <laughs> and you do look forward to it. Do you enjoy it? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I know. Well, okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay, I have to send it up to Carrie in traffic.